Klaus is going to show us how to take down this new style base with his new favorite attack. It is the Warden Protected Sneaky Goblin Blimp, and then he's got Zap and Lalo to support it. Definitely one of the most effective ways to make this happen. Today begins the grand finals of the ECL, and we have a killer matchup for you guys. You've been all waiting for this one here. It is Navi versus Imperium Titans Exports, and we're kicking off here with Synthe for the open attack of the war. The biggest name teams in Clash of Clans in a grand finals. You really can't do much better than that. But we'll see if the attacks can match the hype here as Synthe drops in a blimp to go secure the town hall, dropping in 10 lightning and the Quakes to take out both of the Infernos. And he picks up one of the Rage Towers with the Eagle Artillery as a collateral. Leave up this other Rage Tower up top here, but only ground expos around it other than the scatter shot. That shouldn't be too big of a problem for the Lala when he moves through it with the Town Hall already secured. He's gonna move along the left side of the base here. He just needs to get a way to deal with both of the defensive heroes, the Royal Champion and the Queen, standing right behind the Town Hall. The funnel set though, and the King, if it doesn't go over and have to fight out the defensive kick, we can just avoid him. That would be good. He's got plenty of headhunters here. I like to start here. I really do. And most of the biggest threats here for Lalo have been removed by the Lightning and will continue to be removed by the heroes. But they'll start him with the balloon over the left side of the base here. The Golem takes the lead here in front of the Queen. The King jumps inside of the base there. He got to the Electric Titan work with the King. I don't know if that's where the King was intended to go or if he was supposed to continue off the left side there and follow the Queen. But he does go all the way in. He handles the defensive world champion. He takes down the defensive Queen. He grabs out the monolith and the Queen is breaking the ring of defenses at the same time. Here comes the world champion and there is very little base here for the Lala to handle. But that doesn't mean it will guarantee go through. And he's going to put in a hound on a both of the air defenses at the same time. And then as the balloons go down the middle, the hounds are joined by more balloons on the right and left flank of the Lalo. And he's moving very, very strong. The scatter shot is mostly disabled. He has a couple of balloons that go invisible there to try to stay protected. I guess you could have used that on the heroes as well, but the heroes are doing just fine here. He's got the scatter shot down. This looks crushed. Queen still moving. Pops their ability, taking down the last expo in Archer Tower. And he just needs to coast his way through this last Archer Tower. And he's got it 100% in the bag here. Nothing will stop this. On top of that, even had the diggy transfer off of the world champion over to the queen giving her additional assistance and she looks like she's about to go the distance as well there it is she survives and it's a triple to open up here in this grand finals as synthe gets it done now as we go through this like you saw in the poster so this is the best of three that means this is going to be split over multiple videos here so you're gonna have to subscribe to the channel and come back for more after this match to see the ultimate result, but this is only match one of a potential three. First attack here for Navi will be Stars. Looks like he's breaking out a Blizzard into Lalo. A bit more meta than what we just saw to Synthe, but definitely it is his specialty. Uses the Lava Hound onto the air defense, and as soon as he has that Lava Hound go in just a little bit, then he goes ahead and makes that air defense invisible so that the hound transfers over to the right and was able to clear the traps in front of the super minion. It's not a super wizard bomb, it's super minions because he lands right on top of a bomb tower. And if you land super, super wizards on top of a bomb tower, you're just gonna lose them all as soon as that bomb tower explodes. So you gotta be very, very careful with that. He managed it very, very well and it looks like it was the correct call. He's able to claim out that entire section of the base and the Super Bees even survived past that and will keep on moving with the support of a little bit of help from the Blues. They're going to take out that defensive King, which is obviously helpful. And he's not going to have any troops split off to that direction there as a result. And his heroes will collapse over the left side here and we'll see how far they can go. He's got a lot of spell support here, a lot more than Synth they did for his Lalo. But obviously a lot more bases left on the board there he'll have to deal with so he's gonna need every bit of it but the queen will circle into the scatter shot here he's got lava hound and rock of blooms out on defense they're gonna stall her up but she'll take the scatter shot down before she switches over the lava hound being toned around by the king but not gonna stay over there forever now i'm a little bit worried about the world champion right there but the hound does not go to the world champion it goes to the queen queen under having damage during the expo and the multi inferno but she's got her unicorn he'll freeze it up and here we go. He just needs to push the world champion into the multi. But there's Tess is popping the side of the base there. He needs to redirect her to take the turn. She's under heavy fire now as the queen goes or gives up the tanky to the expo and passes it to the world champion while she's stalled up into ground skill. She needs to pop her ability soon. But he does end up catching her in the ward ability. 
be really, really helpful here. The Rage Tower is active right now. To freeze that multi as soon as he comes out of the ward ability. Perfect time right there. The world champion able to finally get that other multi down. And he'll pick up the sweeper. And he's got balloons distracting on the right side here. Saving the bigger pack coming in from the left. But they're collapsing in, in so many different directions. They're just overwhelming that scatter shot it can't target they're spread out he's got it under control stars that was clean that is how you get it done when you have the value around the town hall but it's guarded by bomb towers instead of doing the super wizards you break out the super minions and you claim the value anyways i see done and he even had a tornado trap on the drop and pyramid titans gonna send in kingsman he's breaking out a zap into electro titan smash Obviously, this attack has been very, very strong in the meta. A lot of bases have been built to try to stop this because of how strong it is in the meta. And I guess if he zaps out the Invisible Tower and the Monolith here, which you got to be careful, you got to make sure that you hit all the battle builders with the Earthquake so that they repair their own hut and don't get any ticks of healing onto the Monolith. That's very, very important so that you can preserve the HP or make sure the Monolith goes down. That's what I'm think of. But he, he needs to get this Warden to control this expo until the flame flinger is able to take it down or the warden is able to take it down but he goes ahead and sends in a hog rider not finding any additional traps there he does have one tesla down south flame flinger move, moving just fine here and he finally gets that warden locked onto the expo and i'm surprised he went straight forward as he did because it's really gonna save a lot of time here he's crossing the one minute mark now and I'll need to see this flame player go all the way to the town hall. He picked up the defensive warden as well. He needs to get his warden out of there. Get your warden out of there. Pull him out, pull him out, pull him out. Warden, get out of there! Oh, this is a problem. This is a problem. Warden continues to hold the healers and he's stuck on the defensive king right now. Forced to ability and these electro titans will not pull his attention. He couldn't get him close enough. The warden stepped up too far before he deploys electro titans. And that mistake could cost him the triple here, very likely. He does finally get that warden to just go down and pass the healers over to the main force here, but I mean, there's no ward abilities. He makes his way into the core of the base. Let's see what he can do, though. King working on the outside of the base there. He's got a couple of hogs joined with the king, or champion joins out there as well. Got to make his way all the way to the defensive queen on the back side of the base here and take her out with the main force. Otherwise, his row of champions going to get wrecked when she gets there. The electric titans are still out of the base right now. And luckily, the wizards, the king, and the row of champion are quickly forcing them forward. And maybe they can provide the support. But he definitely needs to have this row champion pick up a lot here. She's staying well protected for now. He's still doing okay here overall. And a lot more has survived than I expected to be. The queen going through a wall. Now she'll pop her ability, try to get through it faster. The defensive queen still looms in the backside here. Like Shines are looking to potentially be the first ones to arrive. He pops that RC ability. Come on, Road Champion. Come on, Road Champion. Don't get targeted by the queen. He's dropping in Barbarians. He's trying to provide distraction. Road Champion steps in. There is distraction. He's He's got the punch now. He gets through the queen. Lost his Road Champion in the process, though. 22 seconds. Queen's breaking the wall right now. He's got to make it through the expo. He's not going to have enough time. There's not enough time here. He seems to have enough force. I can't believe he recovered it as far as he did. He'll push it into the 90s. The queen breaks the wall. And it does look like it is just a time fail, surprisingly, with how that started. I can't believe he got it all the way up to 93%. But that will set the bar there for Navi's next attack. Bernal finishing out his season here with navi for the ecl and this may be one of the last few times that we see bernal playing with navi after his announcement that he is leaving the team and obviously he has to finish playing out the tournaments that he was already rostered for with the team and he's not going to leave him high and dry here but we'll see if he can get it done here and leave on a high note with a triple in this finals will be sending that flame flinger from the right side of the base there while the queen gets cut off by the king. The king goes in, pulls the CC, while also setting the funnel for the queen to go in and take out the town hall. The poison tower to throw at the king, so the queen's not going to get slowed down. Not a bad time for that. Flame flinger has a Tessa that popped on the right side of the base there, meaning to uh, make sure that he doesn't have any additional Tessas pop over there, so we 
be vigilant about your trap engagement over there. He throws in another Hog Rider, searching for traps. Ground Scalies pop, more Tessas pop, and the Ground Scalies will go right through the fire on the ground, and they make it past the fire, so he throws in a couple of Barbarians and Archers over there to help support, but at the same time, he has his Queen gonna go to ability as she finds out the Defensive King distracted in two different sections of the base that required his attention at the same time, and a small mistake right there, but the Queen keeps on charging through. She has no ability to protect her, but he goes invisible. Rages are up again. He is managing both at the same time well right now. Flamethlinger still working as the hybrid pushes right in between where the Queen and the Flamethlinger work. Queen gets a freeze again, but she's got one more freeze, and he kind of just needs to pop the ward, but as he goes into the range of Multi Inferno, there it is, and the Queen goes down, but he'll pass the healers over. But heals over. No, healers got wrecked by a barrage of right air bombs, and they go down. All right. Also a little bit of a troublesome spot right now if he had the Queen ability. If he didn't lose it early there, he'd be in a much, much better position than he is now. But that really hurts the Mercy ability goes off and takes out the Eagle Artillery. Gets some damage on the Multi Inferno, but it continues to trip away here. He's got a couple of troops to split off to it now. He's got Road Champion to step over there and take it, though. Champion has gone down, though. A bit of a rough spot here. I'm not sure if he has enough to finish it. Warden's still working, though. Still has a scatter shot there. No heal spell. But the miners are going to duck underground there and potentially pass the tank with a scatter shot over to the warden or something else. They get inside the range now. He throws down blues to the outside of the base here. Still has Yeti. Still has a decent number of miners working here. But he's going to lose the warden now. And we just got to think about percentage here. Can he get the percentage all the way up to a 93%? If he gets the scatter shot down here without too many casualties, he'll climb a bit higher. But I fear that he's not going to be able to reach that kind of height. Not that kind of percentage. He'll push it into the mid to high 80s here as he picks up this Archer Tower on the side of the base there with the Yeti. And the Wizard will keep on chip away for a little bit longer there. There is 86. Can he get 87? 87. We'll put him a little bit closer. But with that exchange, with that Queen going to ability a bit early, she would have been able to make the difference there all the way to the end. So he got distracted over there with his Flame Flinger trying to make sure he's protected. And being split on attention ultimately cost him the attention after that Queen ability was used. So 86%. And Imperium Titans will pull ahead to our first lead. All right, let's get try hard on camera here as he gets ready for another zap into Electro Titan attack. Tryhard will begin with a ward walk in for the right side, Flame Flinger in at the bottom, and it does look like he is breaking out five Electro Titans. Usually we see four Electro Titans in these type of attacks, but. That means you're sacrificing somewhere else in the tactic to get more Electro Titans. But like, five Electro Titans is kind of overkill to send through the middle base there. Right? So I feel like he's going to use some of those Electro Titans to walk on the outside of the base there with the King rather than going with Witches. Notice there's no Witches in the deck, but you can see the path that he's taking potentially would have to go through a Multi-Inferno on the outside of the base there. So I kind of get it because Electro Titans can handle that a lot better than Witches, obviously. And so we'll see what happens there, but... You'll go ahead and after the funnel's formed by the Flame Flinger, you'll deploy the Electro Titans in the middle of the base here. And I guess he's just going all five in the middle. I thought he might save one outside, but apparently not. He's not distracted to uh, miss the Barbarians to come down and take the mortar on the side of the base here. Make sure that Flame Flinger stays safe. And he'll charge his way into the core of the base here. One jump. Get him all the way through this base here. Notice how the jump is positioned. So it doesn't open up access to the scatter shot. He doesn't want his troops to veer off path here. He wants to make sure they go directly towards the battle apartment, cross this entire base, and try and take as much as they can before they potentially threaten the healers and dump them right into the town hall poison. On the far right side of the base, the king is going to collapse in into the scatter shot. Headhunter comes down, King of Hobbit's ability, get through that compartment, no issues there. Queen steps to the town hall, but she goes to ability, that'll get her through. The Rage Tower is active, and so a lot of damage output from these Expos. Queen needs to take one of them, hopefully, not, not able to get it. That hurts, he's got the RC now sweeping through, but I don't think she has the punch to take it. Like, this base, and all the bases that are built like this are able to stop these Electric Titans pretty effectively because... You can make it to the town hall usually, but they usually put so much on the court, on the edge of the base there next to the town hall that it's hard to get anything past it. But as soon as that rice tower goes up, a lot of your troops melt, and that's why that arrangement is so dangerous for this style of attack. The world champion dies out. You'll have the Yeti and another Electro Titan working out of the Flame Flinger across the bottom of the base here, getting some more percentage. But there's not really a way that he's able to power through this expo. 
with the Rage Tower especially and the Multi Inferno. It's just too much right there. He needed these Electric Titans to survive as they passed through the little base there. And I don't even know exactly why they went down. Like, it seemed like he had a lot of force moving there. But as soon as that Town Hall engaged, everything just evaporated. So, he'll gather in a little bit more percentage here. Nope, I lied to you. He's going to get an 85%. And that's now an opportunity for Navi as Klaus picks up the defense. So Chat was saying that the Warden was killed by ranged up headhunters that came out of the defensive CC. And there we go, right there. Yeah, Warden got locked onto by these headhunters that were inside of the range there, instantly killed him. That was probably the cause of the fail because he needed that Warden a lot deeper in the base here. But let's dive in the next one. We got Kazuma in for Navi, and we'll see if he can get Navi into the lead. Pressure here wrapping up. Midpoint of the war. Make this one count. Waste this opportunity. But he does go ahead and send in the queen charge across the left side of the base there. A wall break is nice and early to get the queen to go into the scatter shot corner. She could have potentially walked inside, but I don't think he expected her to. I think he expected her to just walk around down south because there wasn't any target on the inside of the base there for her to step up to. So obviously she was have stayed outside, but he thought ahead there. He puts the king to cut her off, and then the wall break will step her into the base. Got a jump spell. Jump spell is going to have to be positioned, I think, to send him towards the Eagle Artillery. But he decides to push it towards the Town Hall instead. I thought he's going to the Eagle Artillery. Maybe he can still get the Eagle Artillery over the wall. I guess he can from the little void space there. So he just wants to pick it up as he walks by and then push off to the Town Hall. That makes sense, actually. I kind of like that. He does have the Eagle Artillery activated right now. So it's going to take him a bit to power through the defensive lava hound. Hopefully the Eagle Artillery doesn't get any funny ideas to try to target his healers. Or is the target right now? Probably the king, right? Go to the queen. Okay, that's fine. She's under very low damage right now. Able to sustain that. But up top here, did have a test so far and pop on his flame flinger. And he loses out on some value with that. A little bit of an issue here with the world champion arriving to the Eagle Artillery now. Not where I expected her to go, but if she can get cut off and pushed to the other multi inferno, then this base is wrecked. There's not much that it'll be able to stop this as the queen takes the town hall. And the Royal Champion take that multi for him. He'll pop the RC ability to direct the RC towards it. Diggy gets the stun. She's under heavy, heavy fire. Freeze the town hall, but she does not take it down. It's going to do a lot of damage here as the Lala makes it through. And now, his base could potentially hold. I like the plan there. I like the plan. But he definitely needed to use an invisibility onto that Royal Champion to make sure she got through that. He got the defensive queen out of the right side of the base there. He'll freeze as he goes through the scatter shot. Still has the ward ability. He'll freeze again. But he's not using that ward ability yet. A couple of red air bombs going off. He'll can pop the ward ability as the red air bombs go off here. More going off up ahead. The queen taking some as well into her healers. It's better to go to the healers right now because the healers have some HP buffer. And they can take it better than the Lalo can. But he'll easily power through this multi. It is crushed. He's got extra balloons on standby. He never needed those invisibility. He had them. He could have found a really good use for them if he decided to use them on the world champion to get her through that inferno. But obviously it wasn't necessary. Swag the rest here. And and Navi has taken the lead. Now trailing in match number one, Imperium Titans will send in Amwalan. There's gonna be another Electro Titan smash attack here. Imperium Titans breaking out all the Electro Titan attacks here. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. We have the Warden collapsing in with the scatter shot there, or not scatter shot, the, uh, the Flame Flinger, right? And he's going to end up taking the Expo down with the Mortars distracted there with the Warden holding the tension of everything and keeping the Flame Flinger nice and safe. So I guess it'll be able to go all the way up and try to take the scatter shot down. Got to get through the Defensive Queen to get there though. So he'll probably get distracted forward there as it makes its approach and could get some heavy damage on her before he actually engages into that area. So see how far that Flame Flinger can move, but... Electro Titans claps around the bottom base here. The Queen will tag out this Eagle Artillery. And he will... Did I just see a wall break drop? Nope, there's no wall break. Wait, there's no wall breaks. He's going to jump into the base, though. He'll jump into the Bolt Inferno. And then once he's into that compartment, if he can just skip the Scattershot compartment and put the next jump onto the CC, which he does, he can reach this multi on the right side over the wall. And then he can make his way across the Town Hall. Now, this one, with a very similar approach to the last one, is going to have the warden go off at a much more opportune time. 
But he does have some damage on behind him. The World Champion dies in there to go deal with that over on the right side. A, dr a Super Dragon pops out of the Flame Flinger, deals with the Defensive Queen, and that timing was perfect because he got the Defensive Queen out of the way there. Right as World Champion steps in to get the Scatter Truck down, and then the Dragon ends up t saving the World Champion and keeping her alive along the right side. She pops her ability. Queen takes the Town Hall, but we're down to that last little area. Where once again we see the rage tower between the multi inferno on the edge of the base there and the town hall with the king standing on the edge and tesla's there to potentially stop him as well you see the style base be very very difficult to take down and he is quite close right now but it feels like it's gonna be another miss like this is such a difficult style base to try to take down and i've noticed that a lot of people have opted to try to go in with the Electro Dragons through the Town Hall with like the Recall Queen Charge attacks and the Inferno Dragon attacks and stuff like that going through the Town Hall. But last time we saw people try to break those out against Navi, they ended up baiting those entries and they got shut down anyways. Even though it's such a powerful way to, to fight these bases, Navi knows how to stop it and they expect it. So Empire of Titans trying to think outside of the box here. They're trying to go with a different approach. And unfortunately, it's falling short with this area, this very, very dangerous area right outside the town hall, stopping it up. I missed the camera for Almuelvin. I apologize. But you know what? We got a Forgaku. If he can keep his team in the lead here. Forgaku could potentially put Navi up by two stars. Baku sending in a Queen Charge Recall into Hog Riders. He had five healers, but he dropped four of them so that he could push his Queen in a little bit and then recall the Queen, the Unicorn, and all four healers out. Can't pull out five if you're going to pull the Unicorn with it. Keep that in mind here. Queen, uh, I don't think she's going to go in and take out the defensive Queen and scatter shot lock on the scatter shot first does she go to the queen or does he pull her out in advance she locks on the queen now was invisible okay gets the defensive queen down and made the skeleton spell invisible as well okay recall the queen out and is he gonna do the same thing on the side here no he goes down south and he'll now push his way to the town hall okay gaku interesting use of the recall spell but this war can hang in the balance of what he can do now with these hog riders will charge the queen into the multi-inferno past the defensive king and have to come down outside of the range of the multi-inferno making sure that it doesn't get targeted get that poison down of the king there slows attack speed down here comes ground skellies which tower did not trigger but the fire from the expo is going to pick up here heavily in just a moment we got the tornado trap on the way here which is really really helpful but as soon as that range tower goes off these expos go to 200 percent damage and we gotta be very, very mindful of that damage output and keep the queen great. Have freezes ready to go. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. That's a that's a problem. All right. Hold it together here, Gaku. Hold it together. Queen will take the first expo down. Did he ever get the CC pull? I don't remember if he did or not. May I think he did actually. But he will go ahead and charge the Hog Riders with no heal spells into the Rage Tower and two Multi Infernos. And he'll need Hedonis across through and take out the defensive Royal Champion to the far left side of the base. He's got a Skeleton spell. He could definitely lock her down, but he decides to use a Skeleton spell onto the Monolith. Lock it down instead. Queen getting her heals knocked back there. They're gonna. And we're gonna end up losing this Queen here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Guys, this looks like a defense. This is exactly what Imperium Titans needed right now. I don't know where the percentage is going to land here, though. He's still racking it some more percentage. He makes his way towards the monolith. He takes the monolith down. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. 18 seconds. Can he finish this in time? He's, he's down to just a scatter shot. The baby dragon arrives to a first. There's a lot of hogs moving still. Hold the front door. He's actually got it. What? No way. Whoa. All right. Well, three. Wait, 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 wait. That cat, that timer, I swear, it was zero. It was zero, right? <laughs> I can't believe it. It's a triple. I am still shocked that that ended up going through for a triple. <laughs> but now, Imperium Titans 
down by two. They're gonna need a bit of a miracle. They're gonna need Urium to triple here. And then they would also need Klaus to one star. But it looks like he will go ahead and clear the traps by the town hall. Battle Builder's there. Didn't get that invisibility tower triggered. So if he wants to go in there, he's going to have to get that invisibility tower to trigger in advance. Worried about the town hall takedown right now. You, you definitely are gonna need six sneaky goblins to secure the town hall with all the battle builders by it. But he goes in and sends them. We need to freeze it. There we go. Freeze it. Invisibility. Uh-oh. King potentially going to get pushed off towards the town hall now. But obviously it was supposed to be gone now. Can still take it. That invisible tower still there to protect it. I'm in a bit of a bind now. Play recovery on this one here. If he pulls this back, it would be a miracle at this point here, but let's not give up on him. He'll pop the queen ability. He does end up taking the town hall with the king. The queen able to clear the way here for the world champion on the right side of the base. He's got the golem to provide the tanking. And if she can get in there and get the multi inferno down, then I would say that this is recovered enough here that he could end up tripling still, so don't give up until it's over. Champion still has their ability. That ability will also power through some of these battle builders in the area as well. Poison throws it the blues. There's the ward ability. Power through the mono. The ward champion getting some nice protection there. Also, the ground skill he's popping on her. He's hanging in though. He's hanging in. Gets the ground skill out of the way. The diggy can pass through and get some stuns. He gets right into the, the scatter shot there and he gets down the sweeper down. This, this, where'd this golem come from? The golem crossed through the base there. The road champion goes invisible from the defensive invisibility tower. Golem picks up the tank, you know, at least some of it. Expo takes her out though. Okay, okay, okay. He doesn't have it. The queen's still alive though. Golem take out the Expo here. The battle builders are trying to repair it. Golemites are blowing up here and doing some damage to the defenses, but oh man, if that Expo would have gone down. He would be very, very uh, close to the triple here. I don't know if it would have made the difference there, but that Road Champion almost got the job done, and he just lost a little bit too much there with the Town Hall not going down. Other than that, it went pretty smooth, but as it stands, it does look like Navi is going to win war number one. We have one more attack, and we are not going to skip it. Looks like Klaus going to be breaking out six lightning and two earthquakes whenever people go in with these weird spell combinations bringing in multiple twigs it definitely catches my attention but klaus is going to show us how to take down this new style base with his new favorite attack it is the war to protect his sneaky goblin blimp and then he's got zap and lalo to support it definitely one of the most effective ways to make this happen sneaky goblins secure in the town hall takedown Easy push right there. He was able to use the ward ability to not only protect the blimp, but also protect the balloons and the headhunters that go in after the defensive queen. Then he uses lightning to take out everything across the bottom of the base, and it's not always done the same way. You'll notice that every time he does this attack, he approaches every base, even though they're similar, even though they have the town hall with this very threatening area on the right side of the town hall, just like those Electro Titan attacks that Imperial Titans was failing with, it's the same general layout. And this is a very effective way to take it down. And he's proven that a few times now in a lot of big matches. He's definitely become very proficient with his attack here. But he will go ahead and charge the queen towards the... Middle of the base here while the king is providing tanking. I didn't see where I used that second earthquake. Did he? Oh, you know what? Actually, I do know. I, re I realized where he used it. Rather than wasting extra value by taking his seven lightning and a quake to go after the eagle artillery, Klaus decided to go in with six lightning and two quakes instead and was able to get more value with the earthquakes by spreading them out while still clipping the eagle artillery and just getting more damage in the area. But the queen hanging on there, hanging on by a thread that invisible tower was able to protect her, but the giant bomb forces her to ability. She misses the wall break and that means she's not going to the core of the base there, but she does step over and get some damage onto the defensive world champion. Headhunters and wizards provided support. Wait, the queen's still alive. I, I thought she went down there in the in the dust, but apparently she comes back out of it. She's still moving. She takes the scatter shot. 
All right, Klaus, <laughs> looking good here. Quickly rushes into the multi-inferno. Remember the Lalo has no spell support other than this one haste, and he has no warden support either. So it's not going to be able to handle a big section of the base, but what it does have to handle was mainly that multi-inferno. He just rushed right into it because it was basically all that was left, and that's always what's very, very impressive about class attacking is he seems to be able to get way more value with his heroes than almost any other player in this entire esports community. But Klaus makes it look easy. It is 14 stars on the board, and Imperium Titan just got wrecked. Nice done, Klaus. That's War 1. We got a lot more. Subscribe. Okay. Get ready for War Number 2, guys. We can play a couple attacks back there, but... Get ready for the next one. All right, so, so with that, Navi takes War One. They start to spin War Number Two now. If you're watching this on YouTube, then you're gonna have to come back tomorrow and catch the next one because we could end up going to three wars. I guess we'll find out. We'll see if Imperium Titans can get a few more stars on the board there and maybe stop some of these Navi attacks in the next one. All right, first one.